Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. In the last lesson, we learned how to show gratitude by saying "ngai" or "dozhè." In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Hong Kong. 準備好未 Are you ready? 咁就開始啦 Let's start. The most common informal greeting is "hello, hello." Just as you can guess, "hello" is just "hello" with the Cantonese pronunciation. We use it when meeting someone, just like in English. But be careful, this is very casual, so don't use it for business meetings. And now let's discuss a more formal way to greet people. The one you're probably used to hearing is "nei hao," "nei hao." Literally, "nei hao" means "you are well." However, we may also interpret it as "hello." We use "nei hao" when meeting someone for the first time or for higher-ranking people, such as the elderly. When it's time to leave, we say bye bye for informal situations. And you are right; it's just like the English bye bye with a Cantonese pronunciation. Bye bye. And in formal situations, use joy gin. Joy gin. Joy gin means goodbye. Finally, in Cantonese, we have an expression meaning "see you soon" that can be considered both formal and informal. Ha chi gin, ha chi gin. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Cantonese. Let's go over them again. When meeting your friends or family, say hello. When leaving in an informal situation, say bye bye. When meeting older people or someone you don't know, ne ho. When leaving in a formal situation, joy gin. And to say see you soon in a way that's formal and informal. Say hatsugin. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Olivia's insights. In formal situations, Cantonese speakers commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we're very close with, we pat each other on the arm or on the back. Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Cantonese expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Cantonese. There are a few different ways to say it, depending on how many people you are talking to. Let's first see how Cantonese speakers introduce themselves to a single person. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。Start by saying 你好，我系 Then say your name. 你好，我系 Olivia. Finally, say 好高兴认识你。你好，我系 Olivia. 好高兴认识你。Good job. Now let's see the same sentence when talking to more than one person. 你好，我系 Olivia. 好高兴认识你哋。Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you all. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你哋。So what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. 你好，我系 Olivia has not been changed. 你好，我系 stands in both case for Hi, I am. Finally, pay attention to the ending. We went from 你 to 你哋 What has changed is the word for you. In Cantonese, the word for you is different if it is singular or plural. 你 is singular, and 你哋 is plural. One more time, to introduce yourself to one person in Cantonese is 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。To introduce yourself to more than one person is 你好，我系 Olivia。好高兴认识你哋。Now it's time for Olivia's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Always introduce yourself to the higher-ranking persons before those of lower rank. In most cases, the person of the highest ranking will be the most elder person. If you use the correct sentence with Cantonese speakers, they are definitely going to be impressed. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase "um ho yi si nei si um si gong ying men." Excuse me. Do you speak English? 
We mentioned the word 唔好意思, which means excuse me. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use 唔好意思 and other words when apologizing in Cantonese. We should use 唔好意思 in formal situations, such as when we're talking to or asking a stranger for help. For example, 唔好意思,入口喺邊? Excuse me, where is the entrance? 唔好意思,你踩住我個袋? Excuse me, you're stepping on my bag. Sometimes we also hear people say 唔该, as mentioned in lesson 2. 唔该 means thank you, but it also means excuse me as used to draw somebody's attention. It is commonly used when ordering food or pushing your way through a crowd. We can use this phrase in both formal and informal speech. 唔该,一杯热奶茶. Excuse me, a cup of hot milk tea please. 唔该,姐姐. Excuse me, please let me through. But unlike 唔好意思, we cannot use 唔该 when apologizing. So when you do something bad, remember to put on that sorry face and use 唔好意思. 唔好意思,我又迟到. Sorry, I'm late again. 唔好意思 can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is 对唔住, it means I am sorry. 对唔住. For example, 对唔住,我打烂咗你部电脑. Sorry, I broke your computer. Now it's time for Olivier's insights. If you accidentally bump into someone in Hong Kong, you can say 唔好意思, excuse me, or 对唔住, I'm sorry, but never 唔该. Today we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank others. 準備好未? Are you ready? 咁就開始啦, let's start! There are basically two different ways to thank someone. When thanking someone for a service or assistance, we say 唔該, 唔該. 唔該 means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add 曬, 唔該曬, 唔。该, sai. Sai means entirely. So, um, gai sai is like saying thank you very much. Another way to thank someone in Cantonese is do zhe. It is used when receiving a gift or money. Do zhe. And again, to say thank you very much, just add sai. Do zhe sai. Do zhe sai. Let's break this phrase down. Do is many, and zhe is thanks. Sai means entirely. Thank you very much. Do zhe sai. How do you answer when you are thanked? It's easy. Just say, 唔使客气, 唔使客气, 唔使客气. Literally means, no need to be polite. But it is the equivalent of you are welcome. So when someone says 唔该 or 多谢 to you, you can simply reply with 唔使客气. Now it's time for Olivia's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use 唔该 or 多谢, remember that 多谢 expresses a deeper appreciation of personal kindness and is used in most formal situations. In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Cantonese, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's how to say it. 你识不识讲英文? 你识不识讲英文? Let's break it down. In the last lesson, we mentioned that 你 means you. 识唔识 is a form used to introduce the question using the verb to know. It literally means no, don't know. But this is how we form the question, do you know how to? Then we have the verb to speak, 讲, followed by 英文, which means English. Literally, it means you know or not know English. 你识不识讲英文? To learn more about forming Cantonese questions, please look at our Absolute Beginner series on CantoneseClass101.com. 
you can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. To make this sentence more polite, we just need to add "excuse me" in the front. Everything else stays the same. The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Sick, yes. Sick, 少少 a little. 少少唔识 no. 唔识 Since this last one is a negative statement, we see the negative word 唔 before the verb to know sick. 唔识 Did you notice that is the same word used in 识唔识 We'll talk more about it in a future lesson. Now it's time for Olivia's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Many people in Hong Kong study other languages, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Yingman with Yatman for Japanese, Saibangaman for Spanish, Dakman for German, Yidaileman for Italian. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression "um ho yi si," but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one: optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step by step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Hi guys, welcome back to Cantonese Top Words. Today we're going to talk about ten lines you need for introducing yourself. My name is somehow old, or whatever. Let's start. Ngao Meng Hai. My name is Ngao Meng Hai. Olivia. My name is Olivia. Ngao Meng Hai. Superman. My name is Superman. Or you can say Ngao Hai. That means I am. So Ngao Hai Olivia. I am Olivia. Or, I'm called Ngo Kiu Olivia. I'm called Olivia. Please practice and introduce yourself in the comment section. Ngo Lei Zi. I come from Ngo Lei Zi, Hong Kong. I come from Hong Kong. Ngo Lei Zi, Canada. I come from Canada. Ngo Lei Zi, Fosing. I come from Mars. Ngo Zhu Hai. I live in. 我住喺 ，it's literally I live in。我住喺銅鑼灣 ，I live in Causeway Bay。That's a district in Hong Kong。我住喺柏林 ，I live in Berlin。我住喺巴西 ，I live in Brazil。Or you can just put a place。我住喺山窿 ，I live in a cave。I'm a caveman <laughs>。
。我学咗广东话一年。I have been learning Cantonese for one year. 我学咗广东话一年。I have been learning Cantonese one year. Or some people who are really fluent, and you ask, how long have you been studying Cantonese? Maybe they'll say, 我学咗广东话十年。Ten years, 十年。我喺 CantoneseClass101.com 学广东话。I learned Cantonese at CantoneseClass101.com. Where else? <laughs> Or you're watching our YouTube videos, then you can tell people. 我喺 YouTube 学广东话。I learned Cantonese at YouTube. 我二十六岁。I'm 26 years old. I'm 12 years old. 我十二岁。Some kid might come up to tell you. No, Sam. So I'm three years old. Yeah, usually people do this. No, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Now you tell people your occupation or what you do for a living. No, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Teacher is teacher. No, I'm a teacher. I'm a firefighter. No, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. What are you? What do you do? Tell us. No, one of my hobbies is to dance. One of my hobbies is to dance. 我其中一个嗜好系跳舞。I don't know. 我中意听音乐。I enjoy listening to music. 音乐 is music. What's your favorite type of music? You start with 我中意 is like I like. I can say 我中意去旅行。I enjoy traveling. 去旅行 is traveling. And you can say 我中意学广东话。I enjoy learning Cantonese. With me, Olivia. 好高興認識你。Nice to meet you. 好高興認識你 is a bit formal. 好高興 means very happy. 認識你 is to meet you, to make you an acquaintance. If it's a more casual situation, you can say 好開心識到你。好開心 ，very happy. 識到你 ，to know you. So it's I'm very happy to have known you. 好開心識到你。So that's it for today. Those are the ten lines you need for introducing yourself. Please check out the word list from CantoneseClass101.com and、uh, introduce yourself with Cantonese and write it in the comments. Subscribe so you can see more of our videos. I'll see you next time. I'm Olivia. No, hi Olivia. Hachikin. See you next time. Bye. Hi everyone. I'm Olivia. Today we're in Thailand. And on the ocean, but we're going to talk about ten phrases you always want to hear. Let's see what they are. First one is, 你今日好精神 You look great today. 今日 is today. 精神 is kind of like lively, but in general, great, like good. So 你今日好精神 If you see someone that has a glow in their face, you can tell them, 你今日睇到好精神喎你今日好精神我帶咗啲特別嘢俾你。I bought you something special. It's always nice to receive gifts and special gifts, I guess, for everyone. 我帶咗啲特別嘢俾你。I bought, I brought you something special. Maybe for anniversary? Well, no, not anniversary. It's not. It's it's the best if it's not anniversary or birthday or anything. Just a surprise gift, not surprise. It's even normal. Gift. I brought you something special. It's a very nice gesture that you can do for anyone. Nay gone the am. You were right. Nay gone the am. You were right. Literally, you spoke correctly. So nay gone the am. You were right. Whatever you said was right. That's usually what a guy have to say to stop arguing with the girlfriend. So nay yang la. You win. Yang is win. So you win. That is always something you wanna hear. You won the lottery. They yang jiao luck hap chai. Luck hap chai is lottery in Hong Kong. It's the name of the lottery in Hong Kong. They yang jiao luck hap chai tao jiao le. What are you going to buy if you won the lottery? Tell us in the comment section, please. Yao xi hao, 今日会清洁 Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. That's very nice. If the roommate or your spouse or your family do that, that's awesome. Can you clean my place for me? You are a very talented chef. You are an excellent cook. You are a very talented chef. Or you can just say, "You eat very well. What you cook is delicious." 
Tracy is cooked. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. This month there will be a bonus at the end of the month. Doesn't cost anything to say a compliment. I always show gratitude. 我挂住你 ，I miss you。我好挂住你 ，I miss you very much。Literally, it is like 挂 is the verb to hang. So it's kind of like I hang you up. <laughs> Maybe you hang someone in the in your heart. You can think of it that way. So I miss you. 预算系无限 ，the budget is unlimited. 预算 is budget. And unlimited is more hard. Spend all you want, but do it correctly. Do it rightly. So that's it for today. Today we talked about ten phrases you always want to hear. Can you think of any phrases that people would always want to hear? Leave us a comment. Subscribe. Check out CantoneseClass101.com. And I'll see you next time in other Cantonese videos. Bye. I'm Olivia. Hi everybody. I'm Olivia. Welcome to Cantonese Top Words. Today we're going to talk about ten phrases you never want to hear. Let's start. 你最近肥咗啊 Have you gained weight lately? Have you gained weight recently? 你最近肥咗啊最近 is recently and 肥 is fat. 对唔住，我唔记得咗 Sorry, I forgot about it. That's never a good thing to have someone forget what they promised to do. 多谢你嘅履历。但係我哋已經請咗人。Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. That really sucks when you go to a job interview and then found out the position has been filled. Right? 我哋有啲嘢要傾下。We need to talk. That's never a good start when someone say that to you. 我今日冇錢還俾你。I don't have your money today. I don't usually like to lend people money because that's what I hate. To ask them back for their money, I don't want to borrow anyone's money. Oh, 今日冇钱还俾你 I don't have the money for you today. 我哋应该试下同其他人拍拖 We should see other people. That's terrible. We never really say that. 拍拖 is to date or like to see other people or to see someone to date someone. 唔关你事，系我嘅问题 It's not you. It's me. Mantai is problem. Is so it's literally it's not yours, but it's my problem. The problem is on me. Guan Ai Si is like it's not your fault or it's not your it's not related to you. It's not your business. I 都話咗噶啦 I told you so. 我都話咗噶啦 Yeah, that's one of the most annoying things to hear someone say. 你有條白頭髮 You have a grey hair. I hate to find grey hair. 你唔使再翻工啦 ，you're fired。你唔使再翻工啦。Literally, you don't have to come to work anymore. But in English, you just say you're fired. I hope you won't get fired. Work hard, be a good employee. And that's it for today. Today we talked about ten phrases you never want to hear. I hope you've never heard of any of those. And I'll see you next time in other Cantonese videos. I'm Olivia. Please subscribe. Tell us what kind of sentences you don't want to hear. See you next time. Bye. Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Hi, everybody! Welcome to Cantonese Weekly Words. Today, we're going to talk about plants. Zigma, plants. Zigma. Let's start with our first plant word. Yip, leaves. Yip, leaves. My plants' leaves are turning yellow. 我棵樹啲葉開始轉黃啦。Why should I water it more? Next word is branch. 啊、uh, ，樹枝 branch。我唔小心整斷咗支樹枝。I broke the branch by accident. Forgive me. Next word is flower. 花。你中意咩花咧 ？Which kind of flowers do you like? Rose, tulip. Um. Whatever. Rose is 玫瑰花 or just 玫瑰。太陽花 is sunflower. Tree, 樹 tree. 
我想喺屋企種一棵樹。I want to grow a tree indoor in my apartment. Is it qualified as a tree? It's a very short, maybe not. 嗰棵樹好大啊 ！That is a huge tree. Don't you ever chop it down. And the next word is bloom. 開花 So literally in Cantonese is open flower. 一到春天就周圍都開花啦。Once spring start, flower blooms everywhere. It's a happy time to see flower blooms. <laughs> So that's it for today. Today we talked about plants, Zigma, and let me know how I can take care of my plants better. And I'll see you in other Cantonese videos. Please subscribe and check out CantoneseClass101.com for the word list. I'm Olivia, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi guys, welcome to Cantonese Weekly Words. Today we're in Olivia's kitchen because we're going to talk about cooking, Jufan cooking. Let's start with the first cooking word. Ju to cook or to make a meal. Ju、um, fan literally to cook rice. It actually also means to prepare a meal. So in a sentence, wow, 五点钟啦，我要翻屋企煮饭啊。Oh, it's already five o'clock. I have to go home and make dinner or prepare a meal. Notice that in the character ju, the four little dots means fire. So you can use it for food that need to be heated up. Like say with fire, we can say we cook vegetables, we cook rice, ju fan ju mean to cook、uh, noodles, but we don't say we cook a、uh, sandwich or salad, right? Chi to cut chi, 用刀切菜 cut vegetables with the knife. 我切親隻手指 I cut my finger yesterday. <laughs> Next word is zin pan fry or saute. 煎蛋 sunny side up. So for scrambled egg, you you use 炒蛋 because it you keep stirring. And for 煎蛋 sunny side up, you kind of leave it in the pan for a while before you flip it or do anything with it. 煎鱼 fried fish, you also leave it on the pan for a while before you flip it or do anything with it, right? 煎鱼要开抽气扇啊 Turn on the range hood when you are pan frying fish. Smells, It, or else the whole room will smell. Next word is, 炸 deep fry 炸炸嘢食嘅時候，千祈唔好有水分。When you're deep frying food, don't let it have any water on it, or else it will splash everywhere. 蒸蒸 is to steam 蒸 Cantonese cuisine has a lot of steam dishes, starting from appetizer, the entree, the dessert.、Uh, we steam everything. 蒸魚 steam fish， 蒸肉餅 steam meat patty， 蒸年糕 steam rice cake。In a sentence， 我好掛住公公整嘅蒸魚。I miss the steam fish that my grandpa used to make。蒸魚 steam fish。So that's it for today. Today we talked about cooking. Xu Fan， do you cook？ What kind of cooking method do you usually use？ Let us know in the comment section. Please subscribe and check out the word list on CantoneseClass101.com. I'm Olivia, and I'll see you in other Cantonese videos. Bye bye. Happy Kim. Hi guys, welcome to Cantonese Weekly Words. Today we're going to talk about continents. Zhao, Zhao is like big island, also called Dai Lo, big island. The seven continents are Chat Dai Zhao. Chat is seven, and Dai is big, and Zhao is、uh, continents. The Earth has five oceans and seven continents. The Earth has five oceans and seven continents. And the next word is Asia, Europe. We are in Europe right now. Siberia is in Asia. Spain is in Europe. Where do you live? Do you live in Europe? Let us know in the comment section. And the next word is Asia, Asia. Hong Kong is in Asia. Hong Kong is in Asia. Japan is in Asia. Japan is in Asia. Hong Kong is in Asia's financial market. Hong Kong is Asia's financial market. And the next word is Africa. 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 Go to Africa and watch the Great Migration. 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 Next word is 北美洲 North America. 
北美洲，北 is north， 美洲 is America， so 北美洲 North America， 加拿大喺北美洲 ，Canada is in North America。The next word is 南美洲 South America， 巴西喺南美洲 ，Brazil is in South America， Argentina is also in South America。And the next word is 南極 Antarctica， 南極。我想去南極睇企鵝。I want to go watch penguins in Antarctica. So that's it for today. Today we talked about continents. So, and I'll see you next time in other Cantonese videos. Please subscribe and check out the word list on CantoneseClass101.com. I'm Olivia. See you next time. 一个男人打紧电话去医生嘅事务所。佢最迟几点要去到医生嘅事务所？你好，有乜嘢帮到你？你哋今日几点闩啊？我哋闩六点，不过你五点半前好嚟啦。好啊，唔该。佢最迟几点要去到医生嘅事务所？一个男人打紧电话去医生嘅事务所。佢最迟几点要去到医生嘅事务所？你好，有乜嘢帮到你？你哋今日几点闩啊？我哋闩六点，不过你五点半前好嚟啦。好啊，唔该。一对男女喺度睇紧一张相，佢哋睇紧边一张相？呢张系你个仔对足球队嘅相啊？边个系你个仔啊？呢、这个哦，最高嗰、那个系啊，佢仲高过我。佢哋睇紧边一张相？一对男女喺度睇紧一张相，佢哋睇紧边一张相？呢张系你个仔对足球队嘅相啊？边个系你个仔啊？呢、这个哦，最高嗰、那个系啊，佢仲高过我。一个男仔喺度睇紧佢本日志，个男仔今日第一件事做咗啲咩？今日天气好好，我下昼去咗游泳池游水。夜晚就去咗睇戏，朝早仲温咗书添。今日真系几开心。个男仔今日第一件事做咗啲咩？一个男仔喺度睇紧佢本日志。个男仔今日第一件事做咗啲咩？今日天气好好。我下昼去咗游泳池游水，夜晚就去咗睇戏，朝早仲温咗书添。今日真系几开心。一个女人喺度问紧书店店员一啲嘢，个女人想睇边本书？唔该，我想睇下嗰个书架上面本书。边一本啊？关于车嗰本。等一阵，呢本啊？系啊，就系、是、嗰本。嗱，个女人想睇边本书？一个女人喺度问紧书店店员一啲嘢。个女人想睇边本书？唔该，我想睇下嗰个书架上面本书。边一本啊？关于车嗰本，等一阵呢本啊？系啊，就系、是、嗰本。嗱，一对男女喺餐厅入面睇紧餐牌，个男人会叫乜嘢食？你食乜啊？薄饼好似几好味，我谂我会叫薄饼。我琴日先食完薄饼嚟。咁啊，不如食汉堡包。好、哦，喎，就咁决定。个男人会叫乜嘢食？一对男女喺餐厅入面睇緊餐牌
。个男人会叫乜嘢食？你食乜啊？薄饼好似几好味，我谂我会叫薄饼。我琴日先食完薄饼嚟。咁啊，不如食汉堡包。好、啊，就咁决定。Hi guys, welcome to Cantonese class top words. Today we are in Stanley, Chechu. Look, it's the beach. Stanley, Chechu. So five words for Chechu, Stanley. Chechu Wing Tan, Chechu Wing Tan, Stanley Beach. Chechu is the area. It's a coastal town, and it's a very laid back area. Very nice beach. Tetsu Wing Tan Stanley Beach. Tetsu is Stanley, and Wing Tan is the beach. 今日 Tetsu Wing Tan 好多人 There are a lot of people at Stanley Beach. 美丽楼，美丽楼 Mary House. Mary House is a Victorian era building in Stanley. It used to be in Central, but they moved it here. It's a very nice building, and many people take wedding photos there. There are a few restaurants in the Murray House, and it has a very nice coast view. So it's a nice place to relax and watch the sunset. Mei Lei Lao Murray House, Tetsu Dai Gai, Stanley Main Street. Tetsu again is the town name. Tetsu Dai Gai Dai means big. Gai is street, so big street, so the main street. Tetsu Dai Gai. You will see a lot of restaurants and bars and pubs and shops and souvenir shops at Tetsu Dai Gai. Go to Tetsu Dai Gai, buy souvenir, buy souvenir at the Stanley Main Street. And there is a market there too, like a street market. Maybe you'll find something very cheap and good bargain. And the next word is Tetsu Guangcheng, Stanley Plaza. Tetsu Stanley and Guangcheng is Plaza. There are a lot of、um, shops and restaurants and bars in there. You can have Chinese dim sum in the Stanley Plaza. Tetsu Guangcheng 有时会有表演 There are sometimes performances at the Stanley Plaza. 龙舟赛事 Dragon Boat Race. 龙舟 is dragon boat. 龙 is dragon. 舟 is like boat ship. So 龙舟赛事 Dragon Boat Race. Every year. There is one super big dragon boat race. In 2018, is on June 18th, and every year is a different date depending on the festival. So check it out when you're in town. The dragon boat race, and people would dress up and cheer for the team, and some company would send their employees to compete in the dragon boat race. It's a super big carnival there, so if you're in town, don't miss it. But it's gonna be very hot, so be prepared. Tetsu Longzhou Choi Si, the Dragon Boat Race at Stanley. So that's it for today. Today we talked about five words that you need to know about Stanley. Tetsu is a very nice town at the south part of Hong Kong Island, the very south, the bottom tip of Hong Kong Island. So check it out if you're in town. I'll see you next time. My name is Olivia. Bye. Hi guys, welcome to CantoneseClass101.com's Top Words. Today we're in Hong Kong at the Big Buddha and the Big Temple, and we're gonna talk about five words about this place. Behind you, you can see the Big Buddha.、Uh, you can see the temple. So the Big Buddha is Tin Tan Dai Fat. Tin Tan is the name, and Dai Fat means Big Buddha. Dai is big, and Fat is Buddha. Tin Tan Dai Fat. Poulin Zi is the name of the temple. Poulin Temple. The temple that I just show you is Poulin Zi. Poulin Zi is the name of the temple. Poulin Temple. Buddha's birthday is Fat Tan. Fat is Buddha, and Tan is birthday. 
The Buddha's birthday is a public holiday in Hong Kong. So, 今日係佛誕假期 Today is the Buddha's birthday holiday, and we are waiting for the performance. They will have kung fu performance and、um, mask changing performance. So I'm looking forward to that kung fu 表演 kung fu performance. Kung fu is kung fu, and 表演 is performance or show. And the next one is sek zai. Sek is to eat. Zai means vegetarian. So at the temple, many people will eat the vegetarian food made by the monk here. And there are many choices here. They have vegetarian and vegan. So you can take a look. And here, I think the famous one is the tofu dessert. They also have some sour tofu snack. So. 去宝莲寺食斋 ，go to eat vegetable at the Polin Temple. The next word is 烧香 to burn incense. 香 means incense, 烧 to burn. So you can see all the incense. They are huge. They have big ones or small ones, depending how much you want to spend, how much luck you want, and it's smoky everywhere. So, take a shower after you leave the temple. So that's it for today. Today we talk about some words about the Buddha's birthday and the big Buddha. And I'll see you next time. My name is Olivia Hatikin. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is: How can I advance in Cantonese learning without living in Hong Kong? You can immerse yourself in the Cantonese environment by reading, listening, writing, speaking, or watching everything in Cantonese. Let's first explain what immersion is. Immersion is one of the methods in language learning by being submerged in the environment that speaks the target language. Learners are forced to read, listen, and speak often in the target language in this situation. One of the best example of immersion is to live in the country or city in which the target language is one of the official languages. Let's see some tools for achieving that, even when you can't go to Hong Kong for long periods. The easiest way to accomplish immersion is to play audio or video materials in the target language as much as possible in your daily life. Keep in mind that the brain absorbs the knowledge more effectively. When the learning is listening to the material intentionally, other than audio and video materials available online, learners can join language exchange sessions for face-to-face -face conversations, or make use of language apps to study the culture and background of the target language. Naturally, if you are lucky enough to get in touch with someone from Hong Kong in your country, try to make friends and to have conversations with them in Cantonese as much as possible. How was it? I hope you like this series. See you next time. Hatsikin. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is Canto Pop? Canto Pop is a colloquialism for Cantonese pop music or Hong Kong popular music. In Cantonese, it's called Yu Yu Lao Hang Ko. Yu Yu Lao Hang Ko. Canto pop is one of the more prominent genres of music produced in Hong Kong. It has become synonymous with local music culture since its birth in Hong Kong. While many other forms of music exist, canto pop is still the most popular. However, you also hear mandol pop from Taiwan and China in Hong Kong as well. Most artists are essentially multilingual these days and sing in both Cantonese and Mandarin. One popular singer in recent years is Chan Yek Sun, Eason Chan, a male singer in Hong Kong. He has been described as a blast of fresh air in the Hong Kong music scene, and his album U87 has been recommended by the Time magazine as one of the five best Asian albums worth buying. The 1980s are known as Wang Gum Si Dai or the Golden Age of Canto Pop. Anita Mui, Leslie Cheung, George Lam, Alan Tam, Sally Ye, Priscilla Chang, Sandy Lam, 
and Danny Chan are the top singers of that time. In the 1990s, Jackie Chung, Andy Lau, Aaron Kwok, and Leon Lai were the most popular singers. They were also known as Sei Dai Tin Wong, the Four Heavenly Kings. In the last decade or so, they have significantly sung less, but acted more for both commercials and movies. They have also established successful companies running production houses and doing entertainment management. Occasionally, they do concert tours and are always sold out. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any other questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Happy skiing! When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances and vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. 
Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five-minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? 
When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. 
But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. Think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases. Start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order it's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. And for even more ways to practice your speaking, check out our complete language learning program. 
Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.